Now, verse 15, he says here, "...study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth." Now, that's another thing. A child of God is a workman. And here he is to show thyself. Actually means to present thyself. Study to present yourself unto God. A workman here evidently means a teacher. And this is the fifth figure of speech. A child of God is a teacher. And that means he's to be a student and he's to study that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And that means to handle rightly. Now, I want to hold that for just a moment because I feel like this is, frankly, rather important here. To rightly divide the word of God means that he's to be a skilled workman, like an artisan, a student of the word. And that he must understand that the Word of God is one great funnel of truth. And that the Word of God has certain right divisions. And the Bible is built according to a certain law, a certain structure. And that must be observed and obeyed as you go through the Word of God. And you just can't lift out a verse here and a verse there and ignore a passage here and a passage there. Now, that's actually the main reason that we teach the entire Word of God. Because my feeling is today that it's so easy to pick out a passage here and a passage there. But the Bible is not that kind of a book. Now, I quoted to you some time ago from an article. Now, here's a quotation from that. Now, this reveals the ignorance of a man to recognize that the Word of God is one great unity that needs to be rightly divided to properly understand it. Now, I'm quoting him. In short, one way to describe the Bible, written by many different hands over a period of 3,000 years and more, could be to say that it is a disorderly collection of 60-odd books which are often tedious, barbaric, obscure, and teeming with contradictions and inconsistencies. It is a swarming compost of a book, an Irish stew of poetry and propaganda, law and legalism, myth and murk, history and hysteria. Now, may I say to you, that that man really speaks a mouthful. And his verbiage is, I would say, quite verbose. And that he reveals here a woeful ignorance of the Bible. And he reveals also what comes when anyone does not rightly divide the Word of God. Now, what do you mean by rightly dividing the Word of God? There are certain dispensations in the Word of God And it is a different method whereby God dealt with man, always on the basis of the death of Christ being the method of salvation. But man expresses his faith in God in a different way. Abraham brought a little lamb, so did Abel. And I hope you don't take a lamb to church next Sunday morning. You're going to be entirely out of order. Now, it's all right for Mary, who had a little lamb that followed her to school, But your little lamb shouldn't follow you to church today because already the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world has come. We look back. Now, that's rightly dividing the word of truth. I wish that man knew a little bit about the Bible before he writes about it. And when he says it's the book that almost nobody reads, I think he belongs to that class. And before any man, can speak authoritatively on any subject. He ought to know the subject to a certain extent. And I'd recommend that this brother study the Word of God. Now, a child of God today needs to do that. And I do want to say to you, when I began, I went to my denominational school, and to me it was utter confusion, the Bible was. And I would rather have agreed with this man. And then that was put in my hands... Uh, Schofield Reference Bible. And I got under the teaching of a wonderful pastor, and that led me to listen to men 
back in the old days like Dr. Harry Ironside, Dr. Louis Sperry Schaefer, Dr. Arthur I. Brown, and those men bless my heart and bless my soul. And the Bible became a new book. That's what he's telling Timothy.